Right, for more on the story now, we're joined by Tandy Smith. She's the head of policy program at Media Monitoring Africa. Thanks for your time. We appreciate it. Thanks for having me. Firstly, let's talk about the disruption yesterday. We saw books being torn up at that launch. What does this mean for South Africa's democracy? Well, I mean, firstly, it's an absolutely horrific act that we, we see this kind of reaction to a book. But importantly, it's, it speaks to the level of threat to media freedom that we, we're experiencing. And it seems as if we're experiencing this time and time again, um, especially during this period. Now, we know that we're in an elections period. We know that they're already... Um, it's already a space of, of heightened tension, but we, we're seeing this play out in now quite violent terms, which, which is an absolute threat to the democracy. The ANC, of course, has condemned this incident. Ace Mahashule himself has condemned the attacks as well. They have no control over their supporters, but it does tell you the levels of which people are willing to protect their politicians, even if it is against our democratic process. Yeah. Exactly. But, you know, the, the problem is that it's, it's, it's one thing to come out and, and condemn um, the action, but, you know, more needs to be done. Um, if the people that um, disrupted the launch last night are, in fact, you know, ANC uh, members or, or supporters, you know, identify the people, take action. You know, it, it, it wasn't okay, and, and that needs to be the message. You know, it, it's, it's okay. Well, it's also one thing to just condemn the, the disruption, but you have to come out supporting media freedom. We, we need to have more from the party um, calling, calling for action against this. So there are also threats today which have now stopped to burn the book in Mangaung. These protesters, uh, apparently people spoke to them and they're pulling back saying that they're no longer going to do it. But the intention is there. It was there, yeah. at least. And, and that's what they think is going to send a message to the media. Many would argue that's a threat to the media, journalists, authors, etc. No, absolutely. Um, I mean, it, it's outright a threat to, to media and, and journalists and, and authors, as you say. And, you know, you need to ask, well, why was the intention there in the first place? Um, it's one thing to, to have a directive to, to not proceed with the action, but the fact that they were willing to, to go ahead in the first place and that it was such an organized um, sort of event, if you could say that, is, is incredibly worrying. Um, you know, there, there, are far, there, there are a lot more ways to deal with books that you don't like other than, than burning them. We can't, in 2019, in a democracy that we, well, the, the, the functioning democracy that we do have, be okay with this kind of act. Mm. So what's the way forward then? Because obviously we can't rely on politicians entirely to ensure that journalists are not attacked because we're seeing journalists attacked on almost a daily basis mm -hmm. in mm -hmm. South Africa. Is there a wider discussion that we have to remind people about the uh, independence of the media, the right to freedom of speech and expression, etc.? Absolutely. Um, I think that that's, there's no doubt that we need to be having these discussions and talking about media freedom. And, you know, clearly there, there is a need to, for the public to come into the picture around why we need a free media and why journalists need to be able to comfortably and, um, you know, well, why journalists need to be able to practice their profession um, with confidence and without the threat of harassment or intimidation from the public. Uh, you know, I think we don't talk about the role of the media enough. Um, we, we, we like to, well, it's, it's considered as the, the sort of fourth um, a state, um, as it's known, uh, and that's, you know, aside from the, the legislature, the executive and the, the judiciary, the media is as important and as much of a key pillar of a democracy than your, your three other pillars. Um, but we also need to be having these conversations within journalists, you know, we need to be calling out threats of intimidation. We need to have far more support for media freedom um, and journalists themselves. And not back down, I guess, because that's key to ensuring that we do protect that right to freedom of expression. I mean, it, well, exactly. I think that when you have a really good level of, of media freedom, you're going to see uh, threats against that because the role of the media is to hold those in power accountable. Um, and that's going to come with, you know, unveiling dirty secrets and, um, you know, that, that you see media doing their job when, when that happens. And that's why, as a country, we still do enjoy a certain level of media freedom. But from what we've been seeing lately um, against journalists themselves, individu individual journalists, but also media and, and our public broadcaster, we're seeing that um, at, at, well, more and more threats um, to media freedom being dampened in the country, which, yeah, if, if, we, if we see more of that, we, 
are going to see less of a democracy in South Africa. It's gotten to a point where journalists have gone to court to lay charges against politicians, etc., because they feel threatened uh, just for doing their jobs. I mean, it speaks volumes about the position of journalism and freedom of expression as a whole in South Africa in 2019. It's really worrying. You know, it is, but the fact that we can go to the courts, that we can go to the judiciary, the judiciary when this kind of thing happens is a positive, you know, is a positive outlook as well. Um, but again, we have to be talking about this. The more noise we make about the, the threats and intimidation, hopefully we'll start countering um, the, those efforts. So, you know, we need to be talking about media credibility. We need to be talking about trust in the media. Um, and that's media's responsibility as well. Mm. You know, media, they, they, although we have brilliant media and brilliant journalists, we also know that media do make mistakes, um, which has had a, an impact on the trust, an impact on the credibility of, of media in the country. And so as much as it's, it's a problem, media need to be building up their own credibility with their audiences and through that um, help, you know, curb the, or help, um, you know, mitigate the, the threats and the intimidation. So, I mean, the public has every right to hold the media accountable for anything that they report on, especially if it's incorrect, factually incorrect at that. Absolutely. And we have that responsibility as media organizations to do the same. So there is a fine line that is being crossed here now, though. Well, there is, a, there, there is a fine line, and you know we also have mechanisms and regulatory bodies in place that deal with media when issues of, of fact and accuracy come up. We've got the press council. You know, public can go to the press council if they're unhappy um, with media. But when it comes to authors and and books and you know that kind of dissemination of, of information. Um, they're the alternative ways, you know, if, if you don't agree with something or you have alternative um, opinions or, or you, you feel that you have facts that, that counter what's being um, published or, or distributed, come out with that, you know, challenge the book. Um, but there are spaces to do that. There's no need to, to sort of resort to, to violence um, and disruption to have those conversations. Mm. All right. Thank you so much for your time and your insights. Thank you very it. much. And of course, with Tandy Smith from Media Monitoring Africa.